Oh, hey kids, how we doing today? So, uh, driving down the road as usual up here in Alaska. Seems like I've been doing nothing but going up and down the highway this week. Burn up a whole tank full of gas this week. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about ethics. E-T-H-I-C-N. Ethics. Um, <clears throat> it's been said that uh, ethics are how you behave when the lights go out. How ethical you are when no one's watching and no one's paying attention. How ethical you are when nobody sees it. It's in a dark room or in an area where no one's watching. Do you cut corners? Do you take advantage of opportunities? Do you do what's right? Or do you do what's profitable or easy or what have you? So, the ethical you is the real person that you are in a dark room when no one's watching. And I wanted to touch base with that a little bit because ethics are critical. And I'll tell you a little story. A little, uh, Grandpa got in trouble a few years ago. Let me tell you this story. Uh, I owned a riding stable, horseback riding stable, and um, you know, horses like people, there's skinny ones and there's fat ones, just like anything else, but I was out driving around looking to buy some horses to add into our string, I think we had about 50 horses at that point at our stable, and I come across this old mare out in the field that wasn't getting any attention, she was out in the field of weed, she had nothing she had nothing to eat out there. It was a bunch of green stuff, but nothing was anything that put any meat on her bones. She hadn't got any water. She was drinking water out of puddles that she made with her own hoof prints. Just a real bad situation. So I bought this mare and I brought her back to our riding stable. I isolated her in a separate stall as I always did with new horses to make sure that they were healthy and took care of them. And I knew I was going to have to pour some money into this mare and bring her up into speed. But I, I kind of put her off to the corner by herself. And I started giving her some good hay and some good grain and tried to bring her up. But she was really starved to death at that point. I mean, she was beyond skin and bone. She was so bad that the guy that owned it said he couldn't even take her to the killer meat sale because he wouldn't get anything for the horse because she didn't have enough meat on her bones to be worthwhile. She's in that bad of shape. Anyhow, I just bought her from the guy. I had moved her into her isolation pen. I had her there for two days, 24 hours. And one of our customers or someone driving down the road had called the Humane Society. And they sent their person over. And that person came over and said, Oh, you've got a horse that's starving to death. That's animal cruelty. And she proceeded to write old grandpa up a fine. Well, I tried to explain to her that I just bought the horse two days ago. Yes, it was deathly skinny and malnourished and in poor shape. Its hooves had been all grown out and she, her teeth needed floated. She just hadn't had anybody give, give a care about her. And she was in really bad shape. But I tried to explain to the woman that I just had the horse two days ago. I even showed her the paperwork where I had just bought the horse and uh, hadn't had time to get her in good shape yet. But uh, she didn't want to hear about any of that. She said that she'd gotten complaints and so she had to write me up for having this abused horse. Well, <clears throat> the long and short of it is I could have called my lawyer and gone to court and fought it. In fact, I did call my lawyer and I spoke to him about it. And uh, his fee alone for defending me on this charge of animal cruelty was going to be $5,000. Or I could simply just plead guilty to the charge and pay the $50 fine, because that's all it was, was a $50 fine, and just be done with the thing. So... I just decided to go the inexpensive route and I paid the $50 fine and 
paid the fee and sure enough then you know now I've got on my record that I was abusing this animal because I pleaded yeah I had to plead guilty to pay the 50 bucks but that was the cheapest thing for me to do at the time I didn't have much money so it was all I could afford to do at the time oh I don't know I guess I could have hired a lawyer and fought it but I was having tough times so that's the way I went now the fact is I did fatten up that old mare got her in really good shape she turned out to be a wonderful quarter horse went to work in our in our riding stable and took kids for rides it just did great for a long time i think we used her riding stable for a couple years after that and uh boy she really improved dramatically the reason why i bring this up is because i you know you you hear stuff about folks and you see things going on and I just wanted to convey to folks about your ethics and what you do in life. Now, in that particular case, I was trying to help out this horse. I paid more for the horse than what it really should have been worth. But I wanted to get the horse away from the owner and, and fatten it up. So I put a bunch of hay and grain to it, got her back in good health, and she was fine. As homesteaders, I have seen people get in animals and, you know, they're going to... They're gonna take care of them, they're gonna raise them up, or they need them, you know, they they get in pigs and they're gonna fatten them up, or, you know, they get in chickens so they can have eggs, and a lot of folks do this because it saves them money. And it does, it can save a lot of money. But let me tell you something. If you don't have the money to provide the adequate housing, and you don't have the money to provide the adequate veterinary care and maintenance for that animal, don't do it that's just cruel and you know if you uh if you want a horse then you got to realize that that horse is going to have to have shoes put on on a regular basis um their feet grow like fingernails so think about how often you trim your fingernails that's how often you got to slap some new iron on that horse now if you're like me and you're a do-it-yourself kind of guy and you want to be frugal then, you know, get the tools necessary and learn what you got to learn so that you can take care of your horse's feet. Um, if you can't learn how to do it, then you better be prepared to pay somebody else who can do it and take good care of your animals. Don't get yourself a bunch of chickens if you can't provide them with an insulated coop or whatever they need to protect them from the cold winter. Don't buy a, a bunch of pigs if you can't provide them with a good shelter and plenty of fresh water and good feed. I guess what I'm saying is if you're gonna be a homesteader and you're gonna raise animals, you have a responsibility to those animals and how you raise them and the main conditions under which you keep them. Just because you're in financial trouble, don't compound that problem by making your animals suffer for it. Make sure you take really good care of them because they're taking really good care of you. If you want to have a dairy cow, then, you know, make sure you do what you need to do to maintain that cow. Give her the right feed. Give her the right hay. Room to roam around on. And that way you get that really good quality milk and the butter and the cream and the cheese and all the things that that cow provides to you. But, you know, you got to realize that you're gonna have to dry that cow off in the fall. You're gonna have to pay to have her AI or bred to another cow. You're gonna have to be able to feed her all winter long even though you're not getting milk all winter because you're drying her off and then when she has that calf in the spring, you know, now you have a calf, she's all fresh and you're getting fresh milk again. That's just the way that process works. Don't get that cow if you're not able to provide to her the right care. Don't buy that horse unless you can provide the right care. Don't buy those pigs unless you have the ability of being able to provide them the right care. Same with your chickens, your turkeys, your ducks, your geese, even your sheep. I've seen people buy sheep and then they don't know how to shear their sheep and they don't want to spend the money to hire someone to shear the sheep. And then they end up with sheep running around carrying two years wool on them because they don't know what they're doing. Well, folks, that's just cruel. That's cruel and that's inhumane. So, anyhow, I just wanted to give everybody a little heads up on that. Start thinking about your own ethics and what you believe and what level of care you would step up to the plate to do. 
I'm here to tell you that if you want to be a homesteader and raise some animals, you got to know about animal husbandry and you got to be willing to provide them with the care that they need. Anyhow, if you like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe. This is old Grandpa signing off up here in Alaska, and we will catch you another day.